Hi, I'm Sean Gannon, and this is Minute Math. And today we're learning about graph and absolute value function. Minute Math, Minute Math, when you need help, you use Minute Math. So, what is an absolute value function, or as I like to call it, the ABS? Well, the absolute value function. The absolute value function can be defined as a piecewise function. f of x equals the absolute value of x, which is equal to, here's the piecewise part, x if x is greater than or equal to 0, negative x if x is less than 0. Okay? So let's understand a um, absolute value function with a word problem here. Electrical parts, such as resistors and capacitors, come with specified values of their opening parameters. Resistance, uh, cap capacitance, I guess that's how it says, etc. However, due to impre imprecision in manufacturing, the actual values of these parameters vary somewhat from piece to piece, even when they are supposed to be the same. The best way that manufacturers can do uh, the best that manufacturers can do is to try to guarantee that the variations will stay within a specific range, often one, plus or minus 1%, plus or minus 5%, or plus or minus 10%. Suppose we have a resistor rated at 680 ohms, plus or minus 5%. Use the absolute value function to express the range of possible values of the actual resistance. All right. So they tell us here that the resistance has 680 ohms. The resistor is rated at 680 ohms. Oh, man. Okay. 680 ohms. Well, what's 5% of that? So it's plus or minus 5% we're looking at. So 5% or 0 0.05 multiplied by 680, what does that equal? And that is 34. So we have 34 ohms here. 34 ohms is the 5% of 680. So if we want to have plus or minus that, excuse me, we have to go that on both sides of it. So we can see that in absolute value of the resistance. So the resistance here, watch this, R represents the resistance, okay, in ohms, minus 680, our target, we have the absolute value around it, that has to be less than or equal to 34 ohms. Okay, so let's look at that for a second. We have our resistance, whatever our target resistance or resistance of the ohm is. 680 is like the main target. We subtract that, and those values right there, that value, whatever it is, has to be, when we take the absolute value, because it could be positive or negative, absolute value makes it positive, that value has to be less than or equal to 34 ohms to be within that 5% that we were looking for. Okay? All right, so let me erase this and we'll go dive into the next part here. All right, so now you've understand the basics of, of an absolute value function, let's talk about its graph. All right, so right here, we can see the graph of the absolute value of x. It's our basic, what we call the toolkit function. It's a base, a base to start with when we're graphing absolute values. But on all absolute value graphs will look just like that, or at least some adaptation of that graph. So let's look at this image. Notice here we start, okay, with the absolute value of x in darker blue, and it has a vertex at the origin. And we're going to show how we can get to our final value there in red. Well, we move to the right three units, the vertex three units, and we get the orange line. That equation is y equals the absolute value of x minus 3. From there, the teal dotted line becomes a vertical stretch. So we still have the same vertex there as the orange line, but a vertical stretch of 2 is being multiplied on the outside, and we can see that the V part kind of comes in there. Then we want to move up 4 units, moving that vertex again, and so we add that plus 4 to get to the red line that is right there. And so we can see that how we transitioned from our toolkit, a regular function, y equals absolute value of x, and with all those steps, we got to the red function, y equals 2 times the absolute value of x minus 3 plus 4 to get that graph. All right? So let's go graph another example here. Two. 
Okay. We're given this graph right there, and we want to find an equation. Okay, for that function. Well, how can we? There's a few things we need to to kind of go about and see. Okay, what's the vertex? The vertex here is three comma negative two. Okay, so we see that there is a vertex, and one thing we also notice, right? It doesn't it doesn't look like your the slope of the line there isn't the same as a, um, a normal, a y equals absolute value of x. So, so there's some compression or stretching going on there. So if we get to the vertex, okay, what we want to do is we can see that this vertex being 3, negative 2 is that we're shifting to the right from the origin, right, 3 units, and down 2 units, okay, and this is going to be important later, all right? So what do we know? So we can see that, okay, that shifting that's going on right here in the image, all right? But then with that shifting, so we shift from the teal to the uh, teal over down to the red, that's how we shift the main function, the absolute value of x, over. But notice here we now have the stretching. So the ratio, the ratio you can see there, the ratio of the original y equals absolute value of x and teal dotted line is a two to one ratio. The ratio of the height from zero to four, and at that four, what is the overall width between the two points? And that is eight, and so it's a two to one ratio. While the ratio of the dark blue graph that we want to find the equation of is what we call a one to one ratio. We go up four units, and at that point, we're four units wide. Okay, so if it's a two to a one to one ratio, it's cutting it in half. That means we're actually multiplying this by two. Okay, so what does this look like? We have f of x, our new graph. Okay, we're going to see the parts here. We have two absolute value of x minus 3 minus 2. This minus 3 is that part right there. Remember, we're going right three units, so we're on the inside, and it's x minus that h value, which was positive 3. We're going down two units, so that's the minus 2 that's on the outside of the equation, okay? And then since it was compressed from a 2 to 1 ratio to 1 to 1 ratio, that's moving down by a 1 half, it kind of flips that, so it's multiplied by 2, that is here on the outside, that 2. And so our equation here is f of x equals 2 times the absolute value of x minus 3 minus 2. All right? Well, I hope this video was informative and in getting the basics on how to graph an absolute value function. If you learned something, please subscribe to this YouTube channel and like this video. This helps us make more free math lessons for you and for everyone else. And as always, Thanks for watching. Minute Math, Minute Math, when you need help you use Minute Math. Minute Math, Minute Math, when you need help you use Minute Math. MinuteMathTutor.com